think there are no disadvantages. I think there's a mindset opportunity that girls, women, if they have an open mindset to opportunity, there is no reason why they can't succeed in engineering. And engineering has so many facets. So whether it's, I don't know, structural, mechanical, electronic, electrical, uh, software engineering, what a world of opportunity there is. So I don't see any particular um, disadvantages. I think it's all about knowing what the world of engineering is about, which is hopefully some of the stuff I'm covering in my speech later. Uh, and also having the right attitude um, of inserting and asserting and learning about uh, the world of, of engineering and thinking, why not me? W why not me? And looking for role models uh, to understand more about the provision of engineering and the multiplicity of career options all over the world that it can provide. In terms of advantages, I think women are just as capable, uh, if not more capable, but just as capable as, as focusing on innovation and technology, and it's very exciting. So I think it's an attitude and a mindset opportunity, and uh, there are no specific advantages or disadvantages. It's all about you as an individual. So start with learning more, find out more, seek out role models, um, just be curious. Curiosity is the most wonderful thing when it comes to engineering and that's partly why I love this sector because it just is dominated by new stuff that's happening all the time, masses of innovation. I think um, we're going to struggle to get materially more women into engineering. I mean the numbers are quite pitiful. Um, we're about the lowest in terms of propensity across Europe for women engineering graduates. Um, the number has sort of doubled in the last 30 years, but from horribly low to still extremely low, under 15%. The future can be very exciting if it's embraced. In this digital world, um, why would women, girls, not be picking science-based subjects to go and explore and, and practice all over the world what they've learned and join companies who are um, innovating and building and designing and creating and maintaining the whole sector that RS plays in? I think there will be more speed, faster cyclicality, time to market. There's a lot of dynamism inherent uh, in the electronics and the electrical uh, engineering um, sector. And I think the future can be very bright, um, so long as women don't feel outgunned and, and start to realize, why, why shouldn't it be me? Um, I could do this, very can-do attitude. And I think high-performing men and women can create a very wonderful future where we have a more sustainable planet, uh, where we are kinder to ourselves and we're using technology to, from everything from supporting a ship that's in the dock at Rotterdam to a piece of engineering equipment uh, that's going um, wrong in a hospital. There's so many things that engineers can do to con contribute to the world we live in. So I think there's a lot to look forward to. Well, the bottom line answer is not enough. I'm afraid, something I'm very keen on addressing. I think we don't even know how, it's a very male dominated sector, I mean, let's be honest. Um, and I don't think we're doing enough to tailor our recruitment and indeed our development of new talent uh, in RS towards um, all kinds of diversity and, and inclusion vectors, not just gender. So, um, something I'm quite keen on because I am a woman who's um, a career business leader and I know I've got a role to play in mentoring, in coaching, in being uh, some banner waiver for all kinds of equality and fairness. I think there's some small things we can do. We need to do more outreach like we're doing today at the University of Northampton. We need to do more outreach to schools. Think of the wonderful Titan truck and how amazing that program is that Mike and James are driving uh, in education and linking with STEM. So there's a lot that we can do there to start the light bulb flashing about, mm, maybe me, and it needs to start in the schools. And some of what I talk about in the speech today is about a rallying call, if you like, to parents and mothers and aunts and uncles for role models who talk about and what their career has been like in engineering, the stuff they've done, the stuff they've loved, the stuff they've maybe not so much loved, um, the places they've gone, the kind of companies that they have admired. So I think we have to be more focused on even something like unconscious bias. Sometimes the adverts that we use to try and attract have language in them that's quite manly. I think we have to, way beyond just the UK, um, be partnering with universities, 
um, finding role models and profiling them. Today I will profile only three, I think mentioned, three of the women engineers at RS. And we have many, many. And we have many really, really good men too, by the way. So the real fairness of opportunity is something that's important to me. It's quite often the men that we have to work with to make sure that we are inducting people in a way that that people understand what the job is early. I think women want to know that. They want to know really early from the advert that they responded to, maybe the job they got. Is it actually the job that they end up with when they get up in the morning? Are they comfortable about how things evolve? So I think there's a lot we can do as we enroll and engage people and as induct them into the company and then develop them moving forward uh, to keep them motivated, moving them around, making sure they have career development opportunities that are explicit, not just implicit. Long answer to a short question. The answer is we need to do more and it's on my agenda.